Well, hello, folks. It's Radio FM 88 Australia. And, of course, we're broadcasting simulcast on live on Radio at FM 88 Australia, broadcasting from Brisbane, Queensland, and um, we're streaming through Facebook on our normal sites, Radio FM 88 Australia, and Dream the New Dream, and we're on YouTube. So YouTube, you can go to Radio FM 88 Australia, or you can go to Andrina Forrest. She's got the YouTube channel as well. So... Um, Let's make that connection. And so, um, Andrina, it's back to you. Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And if you're listening to the replay, you're making me dizzy, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just... <laughs> okay. um, it's our pleasure today, this evening, to have the lovely Michael Lamb back again by popular demand. Um, and you sparked off so much interest because you've got so many... Um, talents in so many different areas um so i know this week we were going to start off with star lore and i know we've got lots of pictures so it might be quite a picture show for people um so if anybody's got any questions or want to know anything as we go through the show please put it in and we'll come back to it afterwards but anyway welcome michael lovely to have you back again and before we go uh Microphone Hi. is um, scratching. You can hear it coming through. Michael's. It, it okay, is it. that better? If I hold yeah, it like that, yeah, that's yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. It's funny. I was working with all these microphones last night. Oh, thank you and welcome. It's great to be back um, once again. <laughs> Lovely to see you both, and Trina. I've got some great talents. Obviously, the sound and the cam wasn't one of them. That's for sure. But uh, we we did come through with it in the end. There. All right. How's the sound now? Is that nice and clean? Excellent. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> just, yeah, we've been um, doing a lot. Just started um, four new courses at the uh, Theosophical Society um, in Brisbane here, the Brisbane Lodge, which has been great. So I started off with some basic stuff there as well. Plus we did a, um, a star night out at um, the back of the Gold Coast as well you know, when we pointed out a lot of the stars and constellations in the sky. So I've been really, really, really busy as well. And also recording uh, the new um, keys. We have these CD keys. Um, I sent a picture of one, but I've got them here with me if you like. If I don't make you too dizzy in looking at these, I had them here. So I've had to readjust things. This is our new um, elements key too. But I can talk about that more later at the end of the show if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So thank you very much for having me once again. It's been busy and... Uh, I'm doing this full time now, which is awesome. Right. So you're going to start telling us about star lore. Yes. Um, okay. So it's, it's a really big topic, and it <laughs> relates. Yeah, it's huge. Um, like, star lore. Can, can you not see yep. my star? <laughs> <laughs> that's a five point star it's interesting well, too because all of those stars actually mean <laughs> something they really do that's a five point star it was taken out of a lot of the um the books of religion but i'll get to the stars straight away but yeah five point star six point star four point stars and seven point stars eights and so on and so forth but the five point is called the the, the penta the pentagram or the pentax star pentagram when it's got the circle around it okay and six point stars known as the tetragrammatron or the star of david um it, it they have a 3d version of each like a three-dimensional version of the star this is actually all quite pertinent and actually relates to it a three-dimensional like if you look at a star on a piece of paper five point star that's 2d two-dimensional but when you see it in 3d it's now called a dodecahedron it's a 12-sided pentagon and that is very much connected to the grid lines on our planet where all the powerful vortexes are. So I'm getting to this is important because this planet is, is like a living intelligent being with its crystalline structures. And that's the reason this star law is all, all about. We have a history that is in the mainstream. It goes back about probably six to 8,000 years, you know, with the beginnings. But we now know with the older sites that are coming out, they don't really want to rewrite the history books now with Gobekli Tepe. We're going about eight, 9,000 years uh, prior. So the original beings that came here, I mean, obviously there's a natural evolution that takes place on a planet with uh, obviously the um, the crystalline structure, the plant kingdoms and, and the, and the uh, animal kingdoms. Then you have a natural evolutionary cycle. But somewhere along our, our lines, we've had intervention by advanced beings now this is this gets us out of the polarization of things if you like 
to know more about this. Otherwise, people just sit on the fence with creationism or science. But when you blend the two and you find what is really hidden in behind the scenes, you'll find that we had some very, very advanced beings and um, hence many, many cultures uh, I call them, um, well, let's say uh, gods or, or we call them extraterrestrial. We are like that too. We're actually ascending to the stars. You know, we're sun beings, you know, like sun, sun is a star, star, sun. It's interchangeable. And that's that's really important to learn that. Now, we've had intervention. Um, I'm sure most of the viewers have heard about a race that came out of uh, Samaria or set that up because in the timeline, Samaria just comes from out of nowhere. Like they look, they're flat out doing, you know, crops and, you know, fertile <laughs> hunter gatherers. And then suddenly this civilization is like virtually built out, out of nothing. And there, there was a lot more of these civilizations around. They were built and put about by a race called the Anunnaki. Um, and they come from the Orion sector of our galaxy, particularly the in that constellation, Orion, it's in between Taurus and Gemini, if you see it in the night sky. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you look to the north, or basically just straight up, you, you can't miss it. So to the north there, you'll see any of this. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's in the southern hemisphere. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, you, you would look the other way as it were. But Orion, the main star we're going to talk about, well, there's three main stars. There's actually a lot of stars in it, but that constellation, the main star that they came from, or that star is... Rigel, R-I-G-E-L, and it's a super blue giant, blue-white giant. And, of course, all these stars have their own planets or planetoids. And the Anunnaki came to this culture to save their own world, as it were. Now, there's books um, called uh, by Zachariah Sitchin, very well-written books, very well-researched books, and we have a lot of star maps that are laid out on this planet. So we believe um, some of the original builders of the, the ancient temples, they go back a lot further than we, we know about. We've got Samaria there. But these Anunnaki uh, were also connected to other races that were already inhabiting this place too because this planet is a very, very valuable piece of real estate. We've had a lot of things happen in this solar system alone, let alone actually what's happened in the galaxy. Um, there are other races that we'll get into. We have the Palladians. They have their their major stars in the Palladian constellation. Pleiades isn't far from Orion. It's just in Taurus. Um, you can see it. Every culture that we know of seems to have a name for the Pleiades. And their main main stars are Atlas, Pleione, Maya, Tageta, Steropi, Electra, and so on and so forth. A lot of the um, ancient fables and mythology you, you must understand are not just centuries old but a millennia old and we have a saying in alchemy you know that bs doesn't last for millennia you know what happens in the news or, or what politicians say weeks ago it doesn't mean much really okay that's the platy system there up on the screen so the seven sisters so most of the cultures around the world if not most all the one that i've studied uh seem to have um got a connection with these stars, these Pallades and these Palladian beings. And now we're having a lot of the um, the light workers having a lot of connection with these beings. And they're actually what we call in star law, they're humanoid. So a humanoid, as opposed to a human, a woman or a man, a humanoid uh, has like the same appendages as we have, like two arms and two legs. And so even a dog or a cat, is a humanoid. A dolphin is a humanoid. It's not like a, a, a jellyfish, as it were, or, or an arachnid, as it were. I'm not saying there are not insectoid beings. Um, there are many of these. I don't know how I'm going to touch on all this this time. It's going to be great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, there was um, a lot of research done. Um, the older papers uh, that um, Robert Morning Sky brought out in the 90s as well, um, he, he researched it because it was in the law of the Hopi and the Apache as well, you know, they've had a law about ancient races that have been on this planet and they're um, highly advanced. And this is where we've had a lot of um, different, um, let's say, domination. They're behind the scenes. A lot of these beings can move in and out of frequency. Um, and I mean by that, we can't see them yet 
we can feel them and when we do see them it's it's very rare but but it does happen well it's actually not uncommon now it's more more common than ball lightning but a humanoid being it can be anything it could be of a insect origin it's just like an evolution on a planet and they they happen to just speed up that evolution very very fast now there's also the syrian connection the planet sirius is actually very close to orion too oh not the planet but the star sirius sorry um is in the constellation canis major that part of the sky um canis major that's sirius there's two stars in sirius there's um sirius a and sirius b the syrian a race cut a deal with the anunnaki um they're like a draco race they're a very advanced reptile race and they think they're a superior race and feel that because they live a lot longer than us they, they're masters of, of telekinesis telepathy um many of the attributes because they they evolve and and grow their 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 pineal and pituitary gland are very very massive now you've seen it um in the elongated skulls of Paracas in Peru. This is all over the world. It's not like a, a five-minute conversation, that's for sure. You see the elongated skulls and things like that. That's um, not just like they say it's binding in the head. That's, you know, I know that went on, but it's not like these. These people are royal, were of, uh, of ancient bloodlines, are very, very powerful. And the bloodline, what they call the blue bloods, have got higher components uh, of, of uh, DNA than us. So we're working... We were working from two strands of DNA. We're moving out to about 12 strands of DNA with our consciousness. And there are many forces on this planet that don't want that because we connect back to our star law. So things like uh, advanced abilities, you know, that you'd learn through um, obviously high-end meditation and skills like that, you would, you'd start to grow with these things. There is much evidence on the planet because the way these temples and that were made and laid out, obviously with the pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge, you always hear these stories of you know these ast astronomical or astrolabs labs or observatories and all these cultures so they're they're aligned to the stars for a reason not that they're just looking at these stars they want to connect back or keep a connection with these certain races as it were or species as it were how are we going so far sound okay excellent <laughs> oh good that's good i can keep going but as i say i've already started jumping all over the planet <laughs> i know I <laughs> as you do up with you <laughs> uh to me as i said it's taken a long time to reassemble it all and it takes uh, many many uh cultures i went to a lot of the um the nexus conferences and some of the speakers they were phenomenal but once again i had 30 odd years 30 plus years in uh hermetic uh study Plus, um, I did the Kabbalah for over nine years. When you work with um, planetary meditations and uh, many different energies, you learn how to tap energy very, very quickly. It's like a psychic, like they're the basic skills, like psychic and, you know, uh, billet reading and pendulum reading. They're, they're like your basic levels in the Kabbalah. So you go through, you read tarot and all this, you understand it all connects to stars and constellations in this area. But outside that, you work with planetary energy and when you feel it it amplifies your ability to retain knowledge and also when you work with certain metals and crystals as well because everything works with metals and crystals right like all our laptops all our phones all our tablets it's, it's silicon quartz technology imagine if you're using it with rubies and emeralds you know like lasers mm -hmm. so it, it, they're intelligent stones the crystal we call it the 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 Christ consciousness, we call it the crystal consciousness because that's, you know, follow, that's what they're really saying. You're in connection with all, all levels of consciousness from solid to liquid <laughs> to metal to, to fire and to, to uh, earth, as it were. Well, earth we see as crystal, but also to the air aspect. Each one of these elements have beings on this planet and they exist in other dimensions through other spheres. But what I was saying about the advanced beings, they hear, see, smell, and feel beyond our normal spectrums. But we've had a lot of the, the, the new um, waves of children coming through that have got a lot of these um, abilities. Some people are more clairaudient, other people are more clairsentient, more clairvoyant, clairsophient, clairgustians. So the abilities of the senses are amplified 
it comes with this um, other issues too because you start picking up a lot of things and sometimes people need to turn off their psychic ability so they can sleep at night or you know stay focused on what they want to do otherwise your spine works like an antenna and you're picking up and receiving so much information and you know 30 to 70,000 thoughts a day is enough that's usually what the average person goes through mm. so yeah the star law the star seeds beings we are of that we are sown from the stars we have like a natural evolutionary aspect to our bodies but there's an intervention we we say it we call it we have the star law dna within us and that way when you activate it it's not junk dna the rna connects and activates it at a, at a super rate and remember of course dna spirals everything works a spiral spiral is spirit Okay, everything, spirit is, is life force. Everything has to have a spin or a spiral on it. You know, I mean, any sport or profession, you put a, a, a spin on a ball, you put a spin or, or an angle or something on it, and, and that gives it trajectory and, and telemetry, as it were. So the star law is here, and it's been on this planet for a long, long time. Okay, as many of you may have read or you know about, you know, Graham Hancock's book, you know, Fingerprints of the Gods, where he uh, was speaking about a scientist called Robert Baval who cracked the code of the pyramids. Oh, well, there's many codes in the pyramids. They're phenomenal what they're laid out to. In the middle, uh, three stars, the belt star of Orion, are mathematically connected or mathematically aligned to the belt stars of Orion. So your pyramids at Giza, which are huge structures, I mean, they're aligned to... Uh, magnetic north and they're only out by a fraction of a degree and also the perimeter it adds up in the old inch system i forget which inch this was british inch or um oh herschel's inch if you do the perimeter in inches it actually adds up to the miles because it's using imperial which is an old um egyptian measurement that's where it came out from that actually is the circumference of the earth and the actual height of the pyramid is actually the <laughs> you got to get get this stuff it sounds like i'm just talking off the richter here but the actual diameter of the earth in inches in the pyramid if you actually go to, to the perpendicular height of the pyramid from the base up to the top the inch measurement is the same as the diameter of planet earth from pole to pole that's okay. just a fraction of it. I won't go on a pyramidology. We're supposed to do that another time. But <laughs> everything around those things. Now, there was also Graham Hancock came forward later with uh, Angkor Wat. I know Angkor Wat's only supposed to have been built about a thousand odd years ago. But I remember, as you understand, with Troy and a lot of these ancient civilizations, they're built on top of other previous civilizations. Mm. And Angkor Wat in uh, Siam Reap in, in Cambodia is one of the largest, um, uh, let's say, uh, temple structure areas in the world. And they cracked that code and it was mapped out to the constellation Draco. Well, well, guess what you see a lot of in Cambodia around those temples? Lots of serpents and lots of dragons. So <laughs> we've, we've got a lot. We could cover here, but I don't want to I digress. Maybe if you ask me a question, be specific. I can keep going on this for hours if you like. But, um, I don't know where to start. I have to say I went to Angkor Wat. It was amazing. Um, yeah. So, um, so is Avery and so is Stonehenge. That's on that yeah, fantastic, I mean, massive ley line. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these yes. different sites are, you know, are powerful. People don't realize how powerful they are. Yeah, they're connected on the same lays, what we call ley lines or magnetic lines. I mean, the Germans so, call them holy lines. They're called the lines of Hermes in Greece. They're called uh, song lines here mm. by the indigenous. Uh, they go under so many names. I couldn't even begin to actually tell you, but they've already been known by the ancients. They know it because it creates their electromagnetic energies that run. You know, it's intelligent, these grids. And most of these sites, I think there's there was something astronomical, like over 3,000 sites put together on these uh, vortex points or these ley lines where they connect. Mm. 
a lot of the Druid groves where they were, and then they knocked them down, you know, the plants and those massive oak trees, those huge trees, and they started putting up the um, the churches and the baileys and a lot of the fortresses and a lot of the castles and obviously a lot of those places. So uh, uh, an example of a large vortex would obviously be the Bermuda Triangle, okay? So mm -hmm. there's over 2,000 people gone missing there just in the last, I'd, I'd say, 70, 80 years and countless amount of aircraft and boats, and not just commercial, but, you know, military as well. So that's mm -hmm. all been documented. And there are 12 of these powerful vortexes on the planet, and then there are all the sub-vortexes. And as we want to talk about in our star law here, there's also stargates on this planet. And now it all sounds like I'm, I'm taking this off in the movies, but all the movies, <laughs> yeah, the other side, yeah, they hide it in plain sight. That's how it's done. Everything you can imagine. So it all, if you talk about it, you sound like you're you're a conspiracy theorist or a blithering idiot or whatever they ridicule. But the dream is the dream, and we're dreaming the dream here. And when you wake up, you this is part of the gifts we get. You know, as we become more aware um, through training, you know, meditation, our love, uh, we wake up in our dreams, and it's just called lucid dreaming. It has many other names. Other people call it diversion, um, inception, when you wake up on the other side in your dream, and you're waking up. And this is, it's another big key to how you move in and out of um, time space mm -hmm. or what we call this, this three dimensional plane. A lot of people think time is, you know, invented by people, you know, that oh, they did the 60, you know, the 60. <laughs> so it's not, time is actually connected to gravity and space. And when you understand toroidal fields, this is how you get in and out in between realms, planets, and dimensions. You don't use fossil fuel. That, that, that just doesn't work. You, mo you move space around the craft. So you've got to understand how the shape of space works. This is how these beings can arrive in, in many, many different types of crafts being spotted now. You know, there's the triangular shape ones. There's, um, oh, my goodness, uh, vortex sources, the cigar. That is that is a huge area. There's many, many ufologists can talk more on that. Um, but a, as you know, there's actually a lot of them actually being built here, and it's all under the you know the guise of whatever. And once again, you don't have to believe a word I say. That that's you know it's up to you to do your own research. So I say to people that, that want to study this this work and move into it, because it's you know about ascension and understanding. We are phenomenal beings, not just you know, meat computers or meat puppets or just protoplasmic beings. We we do this through the soul and our spirit. You know, soul is basically your astral body and, you know, it's your personality, it's your character. It's not your mind. Your mind's part of the deal, some of your physical body as well. But soul is a different consistency to your spirit. Spirit's your drive. And that's what connects ourselves to the sun and all the planets where that, on a large scale and also on a molecular scale. And we're virtually at the center of the smallest quark or, 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 or electron. If you moved to that, you would just, you'd see yourself at, at microscopic, minuscule levels. And then you can go to the massive, you know, galactic size suns and constellations. Huge, you know, there's so many galaxies and where our planet's going now, we're heading towards the Virgo cluster. It, and behind Virgo, there's just hundreds, thousands. I don't even want to use hundreds anymore. It's just like millions of galaxies, very, very powerful. Even we have powerful galaxies aren't there are very close as well, like the Andromeda galaxy. And they're another race of star beings that seeded themselves on here for a while as well. It's like an outpost to them as well, keeping an eye on us, as it were. See, they understand frequency. And they know how to modulate it. Just like we're looking into our phone, looking at our tablet or listening to frequency coming through a radio or a podcast. In between, it's like an ether. All it is is the right program and the right device to pick it up. It's like taking money out of a wall, out of an ATM sort of thing. It's the same thing. And all you have to do is to get from one side of a wormhole or a stargate, you just got to know the program sequence or how to, how to move through it. It could be a rough ride if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah so there are also races and beings 
that want to get rid of the ancient history. They don't want people to know. Uh, they, they think that they're progressing. And that's why we have these massive wars and these massive battles and these massive conflicts because of certain... Uh, it's just huge. Even... <laughs> Even before the Second World War, the Germans had a phenomenal space program um, and they'd cut a deal for that tech. Their technology was phenomenal because even in the turn of the century, there was a lot of um, divergent timelines or parallel universes were being created. That's why there was a lot more fascination back into U Egypt and things like this. So um, different hierarchies cut different deals with these different beings. So they cut a deal with the, the beings from Older Baron. Uh, that was the Germans did that too. So once again, a lot of them in Operation Paperclip, they they moved, they migrated back over to the US, and um, obviously that they set up NASA. And once again, I heard when I saw Bruce Cathy speak about ten years ago, thirteen years ago, he was picked up by one of the alphabet agencies and they took him over there because he worked out a lot of the ley lines. And once again, he wrote several books, you know, Harmonic Thirty Three and many of the other books so obviously it was very very um interesting to the powers that be and he said about what's you see on the surface of these space programs is only a fraction of what's behind mm -hmm. i mean the, the the craft i mean how come we're not going to the moon anymore what, what, what's going on there you know there was this massive space race between you know the two superpowers in the world but now oh they're still going they're all right there are bases on the moon, there's bases on Mars. There's bases and build outs all up through the solar system because you had so many different beings. They've got a, like a galactic council, the star law, and certain ones can operate, but people have to become conscious. If you're pure conscious and pure love and your energy is clean, you, you, can't be, you can't be harmed because you'll be looked after, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, that, definitely. Is that covering? Yeah, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll just I'll, I'll just keep taking this anywhere you want to go with it because okay. yeah, anything you can imagine. Sorry, I didn't center. I'm going to make you dizzy again. There you oh, go. God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my God, you're going through a stargate. <laughs> <laughs> what fun! Yeah, no, I'll tell you something funny. When I lived in Glastonbury, um, yes, and I shared a house with a lady who was very psychic and she always used to every time anybody come to the door she used to say this is andrina from andromeda <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway oh um i think andrew uh, asked a question didn't he jeff i saw something flash up um, um i think he asked what star system that michael was from or something i saw it briefly <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm from all over um yeah, 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 once again, it's very hard to uh, it's very hard to sort of summarize yourself. I have a strong connection with Arcturus and Sirius and Andromeda, as well as the Palladian aspects as well. But also understand and have a very powerful respect for the for the Draco too, because you have so many in there. there it's not like you're just seeing like one like clone race or something. There are so divergent. It, it's imagine this in our just in our solar system, or even just our galaxy, this sector of the galaxy, just this. Imagine all the types of dogs, or cats, or birds, or fishes, or insectoids. Imagine that, and they all have a hierarchy in different systems. Now, this is where you'll understand a lot of the ancient builder races, even before the new gods, because every time, every every time we have uh, a two thousand one hundred sixty year cycle it's called procession equinoxes which we just moved through we've just hit it now um between you know obviously we're coming out of the age of pisces moved into the age of aquarius so we're, we're moving into that now i mean that that the 2012 was there but it was a big handover from the 60s 1960s right through up to about the 222 um which was just last month that's in my opinion my humble opinion but every time there's a year it's a change so before the piscean age or the, or the, the age of the, of the christ as the Pisces and the fish, before that was the age of the Aries or the Aryan age, okay? And that's where you get the, the Ra and the Ram. You'll see it on a lot of the ancient mm -hmm. Egyptian uh, monuments and their, uh, their, their gods, as it were. And you have also the bird-headed gods or the bird tribes, and they're very, very popular through the Americas as well. 
I'll get more to that. They represent the eagle, the eagle and the serpent. But once again, it's all relevant. It's all connected to the stars. That's why I try and say, hey, listen, you see that, that, that sparkling light up there, that sun? How far away? The amount of energy that it creates is phenomenal. It creates like trillions of tons of life every nanosecond on this planet in connection with the moon and the brother sisters of the planets. They all relate to our chakras and our soul. So we're actually mapped out to the stars. That's why these names can't be changed. I wanted to change the names of these stars. And they're not going to do that. It's like changing the names of the week. There are certain races and beings that are very prominent here and they can't erase them, even with the power that they've got. Uh, some of the, uh, the Jesuit, that breed, um, that ilk. Um, so things stay as they are, but for us to move forward, we have to become aware. That's Aries that you have there on, on the board there. It's the ram. Before that, you had the Taurian age or the age of the bull. That's why it's really powerful. You know, the cow sacred in India, you know, it's uh, you have the, the bull-headed gods, you know, the age of the Minotaur, you know, through Crete and Minos. And once again, I, I could do a whole lecture just on that, that age itself. You know, you have Hathor. You know, the, that's where you see certain gods with um, the horns, you know. Um, before Amun Ra comes along, you have uh, the, the horn-headed ones. That's why horns are very popular with um, very uh, various hierarchies of pantheons of gods and goddesses around the planet. And it's not just the horns. It's actually the shape of the way the horn is. It's like a like like a conch shell. It's uh, it it has a a sound. It's not just that. It's resonant. Its shape is all balanced to the golden mean. So it's like a, an artifact. It's like the Horn of Plenty. There's all these massive artifacts on this planet and there is a big race to get them. And look, yeah, I know a lot of the battles are over oil and things like that, which is part of the reason, but there are these massive relics and artifacts that exist on this planet. And it basically sounds like a video game or any, all the video basically that people go for. They're looking for this crystal or they're looking for this stone or they're looking for this wand or this relic or this crown. They're, they're very, very powerful artifacts. And some of them, the average person has no idea what they are. But look at it again. Look, look at our tech. It's all, you know, all the AI, it, it's all done through crystal crystal technology, crystalline radio. You know, you, you understand how. So, I mean, look at the first watches. I mean, they had a ruby spindle. Because the, stone, the stones hold time, when you understand it, you know, they're living stones. The first lasers were ruby, you know, they were reverse engineered in the 60s. Even the word laser, you know, you can look that up in um, Lawrence Gardner's um, Lost Secrets of the Sacred Ark. There are so many books I could sort of mention. But once again, the star law, it takes a long time. Even just the hierarchies on this planet, you go back not just 1,000, 2,000, 2,000 years, you understand how those lines um, come together. And why certain beings' names keep coming up, you know, they're written off as mythology, but, you know, the myth is still here. You know, the legend is there. It's truth. And hey, that's Mike, what we're looking for. Yeah, go. Bring out, your, bring out your microphone. It's just touching on your shirt again. Mm. Sorry, mate. That's that's good. <laughs> okay. This is my this is my average mic tonight. That's my good. <laughs> How's is that better? Thank you. Yeah, as long as you okay. keep it still. <laughs> Oh, Greg George is asked. He's on. Hi, Greg. How are you? Uh, Michael, what are your thoughts on Dulce, New Mexico? Do many of the Arnian races uh, congregate there? Yeah, there was a big battle there at the end of the 70s. Um, I found this out through um, Phil Schneider before he um, passed away in the, the uh, mid-90s, you know, the tech that was there. Uh, the Dulce uh, base in New Mexico, uh, a lot of the, the Draco – had a control there. There's a lot of the ETs are underground in these massive military, you know, dumbs, we call them, deep underground military bases. And they go down kilometres, you know, several, several kilometres. In fact, this whole planet is like catacombs. We call it Hollow Earth because there are dozens of races and species that exist mm -hmm. there. Um, in Dulce, I'll just ask that question. i answer that question if you don't mind me answering that question that no, Greg no, no, no. asked. Yeah. So Dulce, yeah, what happened was the – They'd cut a deal uh, with the, the U.S. hierarchy. It's a, you know part of the military-industrial complex, and they tried to, to um, you know do do a deal, but 
it's very hard to do with the Draco. They're highly telepathic. They have two hearts. They're like seven to eight, 12. I mean, the Royals, they're like 14 feet tall. They, they Phenomenal amount of understanding and power, these, these beings. They've been here a long, long time. Um, we're talking tens of thousands of years. They have, they have experiments that they, they want to run here, and they've had to sort of go underground, literally, you know, bases in Antarctica and everything like that. It, it's a big area to cover, but there was a big battle. The, the military said, no, you know, we're not giving you any more territory because they've taken over more because a lot of the, 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 the dump, they're all connected. There's bases by uh, maglev trains or uh, mag trains, all that sort of stuff. All the tech, it doesn't go on the surface. It goes underground. Hence why there's billions, if not trillions of dollars go missing in these budgets. Anyway, getting back to the story, I'll just say it. There was a, big um, firefight so they send in the navy seals from what i remember and what i gathered from my t intel they they went there and these were the these these you know navy seals. they're very 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 powerful troops they're, they're they're very switched on they're very hot together and they went up against the drake and they were just completely knocked out they were just just slaughtered they didn't have a chance because if you understand about the super soldiers programs on this planet if you understand that you'll understand the, the Drake love going up against uh, people. They, they they love it. You know they they think we're an inferior. You know, they think of us as, a, as as food, like you think of a steak. That's that's what they look at us like. So yeah, so yeah, they had to cut a deal with them um, because they want to stay uh, incognito and keep doing their stuff. Um, <laughs> it's 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 massive when you get into it. You could check that out probably on a few different sites. I don't even know if you can get them anymore, if they haven't been taken down. But many of the um, great talkers speak about it. So you hear about these these dragon dragon beings or these these uh, reptiles or reptilian beings. It's been documented a lot of times, but they write it off. It goes hush up, gets buried. But they're, they're an incredibly uh, powerful race. They see themselves as warriors, and they, they were in not just there, they are in Montauk. Uh, you know, after like the Philadelphia experiment, all that as well. So that was um, all hushed up. But back in the 40s, they did that. Uh, they got Tesla in on the Philadelphia experiment and Nikola Tesla. Uh, Roosevelt got him in on that. And they wanted to make a ship go under radar. But um, they that was the cover operation. But what actually happened, the ship went invisible. But it didn't go invisible like, you know, when they were watching it, it actually moved through time in a 20-year cycle, what we call the 9-11 frequency, when you understand how that works. Anyway, it moved out to Montauk 40 years in the future from so 42, it was 42 years, so they went up to 82. And there was three brothers on that ship, and that was um, Al Bielik, Duncan, and the other brother. The other brother was unfortunate. He got caught in the armor when it came back because when you move on a structure through time and space, um, it liquefies. Um, like, like if you went to an ET craft, the metal is like it's organo metal. It's like a high end metal, not like the, um, the stuff we have here. It's a combination of metals. They grow out, out in other cultures um, in outer space. And it's like, a, it's like a living metal. Like if you were connected to one of those massive cigar ships, some of them two, three kilometers long, you, you communicate through telepathy or empathy. It's a connection. You're, you're like you're hardwired. So yeah, next level up from your mobile phones and your tablets. You know, that's why your energy. Because that's Montauk there at the end of um, Long Island. Yeah, that's where I went. There's another naval base there. But anyway, I've got all that too. That was from um, Al Bielik. He only passed away in 2012, actually. Mm. Um, he came back down time. Time travel is um, something I was fascinated in when I was a child. And that's how you get in and around, you know, the galaxy. Because if you went in a rocket or a space shuttle from here just to get to the next solar system, if we went to the Alpha Centauri uh, cluster, it'd take you 20 years. Whereas, yeah, see, there's a there's a misnomer here, and people think, you know, I'm, I'm an egotist, or I don't care, I, I don't care what people think of me anymore. It doesn't matter. It, that nothing can move faster than the speed of light. No, that's just too slow to move around um, the galaxy. And particularly if there's two stars working together, like if there's a binary star system, light's too slow, you know, 186,000 miles per second. It's just too slow. What's that, about 300,000 kilometers a second? It's too slow. So it's instantaneous. So that's the next level we're moving to or 
it's not so much we're going into the future. The, as you, the further you go into the future, the more one must go into the ancient past. You, you kind of get it. You, you, it's a paradox because <laughs> when in the sand, you're moving out of 3D into 4D into 5D, five-dimensional consciousness. You, you can understand dimensions are wrapped up right in front of your face. You know, dimensions just can unfold in front of your face. It, it's it's not for the average person to get their head around it, but if you actually sort of work with this stuff, you can understand it. And it's it's been there, but once again, you know, the, the, the powers that be don't want people to access it until they're ready or they feel they're pri privileged like the elites do and that um, they're going to do, obviously, Agenda 21 on um, planet Earth. That's what they're aiming for. But there's obviously a lot of pushback on that. You know, we, we have a right to be here. Mm. Um, yeah. How's that? that? That sounding all right? Good? Yeah, yeah. Talk from your microphone. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> my tech isn't great. Okay, it's on my face. That's good. Yeah, thank you. When, you. when you're moving around, it's crackling away. I know. I like to dance when I go to these interviews. It's important I move around. <laughs> Keeps <laughs> things going. Oh, my gosh. That's it. I'm really glad it's working. That's it. I'm good. Yeah. Keep, just keep still. <laughs> That's impossible for me. <laughs> Except when I'm meditating. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just, ama it's just amazing um like you're you're touching on subjects that i don't know anything about i know look tiny bits here and there but um so it's all a learning curve for me and and a lot of the listeners so um so what, what is andrew saying here andrew says apparently putin captured a recently activated star gate ship under the desert in southern ukraine the thing is we don't really know what we know all these things are going on, interdimensional and all sorts. I mean, and like exactly. For, for some people, they haven't got a clue. They just think we're on the earth and that's it. It's just like, well, <laughs> I don't know what to, how to express um, because it's just like interdimension, stargates and all sorts of things. Like It's, it's like a, another... Um, whatever <laughs> you know it's just just amazing that there's just so many layers and dimensions and and you and you're crossing through so much here at the moment which is um which is great so just keep talking <laughs> thank you so much uh, that's good i'm just going to keep this mic sorted that's it i've got it really good i got it's unreal i had like 20 mics in the room with my um my tech guy last night, Cam, we were working, we were recording because just recording these new, um, as I say, we've just got the new elements key out, which is good. It's available um, on our website, which is good. It's just me uh, where I talk about how to meditate on the elements and not just doing like silence meditations. You actually build energy, you know, like through physical, mental and astral energy you know, through your bodies. So you strengthen it. Uh, that's obviously, you know, we weren't allowed to talk about when we were training um, and, um, Meditate, you know, we will be excommunicated when we we're doing this sort of work. But um, now it's got to come out, you know, I mean, he wants to take this to the grave. When you connect it all, it, it, is, it is gargantuan. Well, hey, everyone, you want an infinite consciousness. You want, you want to know what infinite is? When you connect, it just keeps blowing your mind. It's it's unreal when you see how it works. It's it's you'll never ever ever be bored for the rest of your life. You'll always be awake. You know, it's like you, you, sometimes you're going to numb yourself a bit just as sort of oh my gosh, you know. So imagine like if you go for a drive with even a fraction of this knowledge, you you. you I mean, I did about six and a half thousand k's driving through Europe about six, seven, eight years ago, and it was like deja vu like on steroids it was, it was just like every <laughs> it was like having hourly even on minutely because you could see it and you could go down the timeline so many many people have all these gifts anyway they've only accessed some of the uh, because if you hit it too hard or you get it too early it will just blow your mind you just have like a mega what we call a brainstorm and it's like but in the negative sense so we want the positive brainstorm we want to be able to control it you know steer the weather that's the next level you know that's the way the druids and many of those cultures and anyone can say oh there's a there's a negative side to this culture or negative so, side of these beings but there's also a positive side as well so that's that's when you we do the tree of life or the flower of life and the fruit of life you actually neutralize yourself you're polarized between masculine feminine negative positive up down in out old and young it's like you'll always be in touch with your um 
your younger self, your, your, your 10 year old, your five year old, you know, whatever age you can slide down the timelines. Plus, if you keep going on this work, you'll, you'll be presented things in your dreams. You'll meet certain beings and it's, it's up to you. As I said, that's why we do the work so we can um, discern what, what is friend or foe or, you know, what is indifferent uh, as it were, because it all becomes consciousness in the end and you're accessing on this pathway immortality which is what's called the philosopher's stone in all the books and all the movies i mean harry potter made that all popular again but it's, it's always been there it's been there since uh the ancient times and the philosopher's stone is understanding immortality and uh how you connect everything together because that that that's how it works you it's you're in your playground, whatever, you know, it's your little sandbox, wherever you want to go with what you have, then be in that space, be strong in the space, you know, courage in your convictions. But if you want to connect the dots, I mean, I, I teach this, you know, I'm bound to it this cycle, this lifetime, and I, I'll do the best I can. So, you know, I, I have, teach, you know, students around the world and it's a real blessing. So, yeah, to connect the, the star seeds, I mean, it would be huge, probably be on the scope of this show or many shows, but if you actually bring up a lot of the, I mean, the names of these star systems, it sounds, as I said, it, it's almost like non-provable because it's like Atlantis and prior to Atlantis, you know, at the same time, you had Lemuria and obviously Hyperborea, many, many of these ancient cultures. But if you're accessing that that knowledge, it's it's like there's still that ghost, there's still that phantom it's like a phantom radio suit. It's happened with radio stations and TV stations before when they've closed them. There's phantom signals that exist. It, it leaves a signature. It leaves an imprint. And and I, I don't know if you've uh, understood about when somebody passes over, you know, the, you can access their, their RNA and their DNA for 30 days, probably 40, 42 days, or even more strongly in the room. But then again, you may have those guides with you your life you know, because they're assigned to you. So there's a lot of complex laws in this universe. You know, the thing that things hand happen so randomly, that's just like an old paradigm. You know, the most things are of intelligent design. I mean, if you look at the way the planets move, people ask me, oh, is the poles going to, are we going to tip? Is the planet going to tip over and all that? I said, there's too many vested conscious interests on this planet. For things mm -hmm. to go that way. Yeah, sure, there's some shocking battles and some shocking things go on. Absolutely terrible. But if you access that energy too too soon, you it it'll blow your chakras. It'll just blow your, you know, you'll you'll spontaneously combust, you know. <laughs> um, I don't mean that as a threat. I mean it's like that actually happens. There's about a thousand cases of that in India every year when people spontaneously bust. That's the spirit leaving the physical body. And that's uh you know, has it's like a sun. The spirit's like a sun, your soul's like your uh, it's it's a, another part of the vehicle, part of the – all held together through the etheric web. That's how the body functions. So if you looked at yourself, if you looked at your etheric web, then you'd, you'd look like, like some space being. You really would. Like if you see all the chakras, mm -hmm. you know, something like you would see with Alex Gray's work, it, it, very accurate. See, when he did that, he was obviously connected with a lot of those substances. I'm not promoting the use of these substances like DMT, LSD, uh, MDMA, those things, they speed up serotonin and melatonin production in the body, which accesses more RNA, more DNA. So you actually think you're hallucinating, but you're actually seeing into five, 5D consciousness. You're seeing thoughts, you're seeing this, you're seeing that. Um, but you can do it through spiritual practices, you know, very, very safe ways to do that. But what, what I'm saying, the molecular structure of some of those um, plant-based substances and other modifications amplify the serotonin and the melatonin serotonin and melatonin production in the body and the, the, the molecules are almost identical they're not almost identical they're very very similar as you would see so you're seeing beyond the veils we, we call the seven veils Many, many of the, uh, the light workers would know this. You, you know about the veils, don't you? When you ca you see, you can see through, or you can hear through realms and dimensions. You can hear what someone's thinking when they might be saying something else. So, as you take the cloaks, as you're prepared, the veils are like st stripping away, and you can see 
hear, feel, sense, and know into other aspects. Mm. So many of the um, the light workers do this, and uh, they they do, but they're still most of the light workers I know are working three, four, maybe five veils. Once you start going to the other ones, then you, you know you're going to have to be prepared. You're going to have to really you know know what you're doing. Uh, it's not. It's, I don't mean that as a fear. It's like you dream your dream. You're, you're being looked mm. after. You're being guided. And the amount of times that you know you you got to understand, you will be looked after, and you'll be ready when you're ready. You know when you're ready. You know next next ascension, next next fail. And the thing is, you get to understand that we don't really really die. We never die. We, we do physically. But, you know, and you might lose your mind and your consciousness, you know, when you have the past thoughts, you know, when you're remembering things from previous cycles, previous incarnations. There's also a difference between reincarnation and resurrection. Um, reincarnation is you go through the physical Passover. It's important people should learn about death. I mean, most of the old cultures, it's not a bad thing. It's just understand it, what it is. It's the physical breakdown of the body. It's no longer. But soul travels through into the other realms, you looked after, you get to meet all your friends and fam again, whatever, um, and then you get assigned, maybe another lifetime, you might come back sooner, rather later, some people don't want to do more assignments here, oh, I can understand that. No, no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> last one, last cycle, and then you see other people, yeah. <laughs> you're just thinking, they'll be coming back, they've got a few to do, yeah. I mean, you've got to have a sense of humor with this as well because there's no way you're going to be able to take it all on board. You know, it's like <laughs> the things that take place on this planet are just, it's just not explainable to those that are awake, um, uh, that aren't awake, you know, for the right reasons. Well, they'll be awake to a certain level and you can take that knowledge. It's mm -hmm. once again, if you were like fully attuned, you could, it'd be very, very difficult to walk around. You're like an industrial area or, or a war zone if you're fully, you know, switched mm -hmm. on. But once again, there's a lot of stories of what, you know, pilots and navigators and, and, and super soldiers have seen in combat, things that have taken place. Uh, they've had incredible experiences and you know, their body gets so uh, traumatized or they're going through so much fear that they've hit, um, you know, fight or flight or freeze, you know, system shock survival. So like it's like your spirit takes over or, or your your advanced self or your higher self look at it as you know your your angel your god whichever way you want to stack it you know your et friend or whatever whichever way you stack it you're going to be looked after you know so take mm -hmm. take care i need i know there's things that take place on this planet i don't want to get into what i want people to know is that you know you're wired up to the stars you know and that's star law l-o-r-e and the law has been lost and it's time for people to find it again and face that mm -hmm. move into that world you know so your spirituality becomes a connection if you're ready for that i mean there is also on this plane you have elemental beings you know once again you have the sprites and the fairies and you know the dwarves and that but they exist in different dimensions as us you know like you know the stories when um you know the, the handsome prince meets the you know the princess but she's an elfin fairy and he takes she takes him into his world to marry and um they marry he's living there and he wants to go back and visit his family and they get warned and if you go back through that yeah. through the fairy ring you know through that portal to that vortex you got to be prepared you got to not do this you not do that they go back in time he goes back in time and he doesn't go back in time, back to his land. He goes forward in time. All his friends and family passed on because when you're in another dimension, time changes. It, 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 it speeds up or slows down. People think this is constant, but it's not. Time is it's like an ocean. You can access it at different places in uh, various ways, as it were. It, it, it's like that's what you see in a Stargate. It's like a liquid face around the nine. You see that on the yeah it has has nine the nine's the key as well if you understand nu numerology or advanced numerology or, I'm know, in number nine <laughs> yeah nine well yeah exactly well even <laughs> Tesla Nikola Tesla said three six nine you understand that mm. you, you're going to understand you know a lot more than the um, the asleep people that's for sure mm. the nine is the key uh, it works three six nine. And if you understand how the nine works, just the look of that number, if you look at that's how galaxies move, uh, how tornadoes, hurricanes, and they work either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you can also access time through your dreams. You can, you can 
but, but that's that's again that's dream law if you understand that many of the cultures mm -hmm. around the planet and the elders and the, the shamanic um, uh, teachers have explained about that so it's like yeah you can access that but once again if you go through time you have very much um, responsibility you're not supposed to touch or access you know thou shall not intervene as it were just be an observer to learn many many warriors have been uh, <sighs> seen things when they've been on the battlefields and I, I've seen it in the timelines in, in my life as well I got taken there if I wanted to do this work oh my gosh yeah it's like it was like you got taken across the battlefields and you saw the absolute carnage. It's just, it, it's been phenomenal. But what you see is you see like these, like Valkyries or like these angelic beings or, or whatever, and they take the souls away to process and then take them through realms and dimensions. But it's, it's a very complex thing. There's a really good book, uh, Ruby uh, Stubwitz. Hang on. Because my thing dropped, it did too. Yeah. Stubwitz, yeah, he's passed on now. He brought a book out. Um, Porn of war, lays and porn on the on the on the field, you know, like a like a chess piece. See that? Yeah, that's a really good picture. Thank you. Yeah, that's the uh, a spiral galaxy. They work in different systems, so it's a spin. This is how water works too. It creates vortexes and scaries, and you have once again like tornadoes or water water spouts, and that's what happens with happens in tornadoes. A lot of people understand. There's a lot of dimension, a lot of really, really weird anomalies go on in tornadoes. Really strange things, like you know, you know, softenings of metals. And, but that that's all about how spin currents and things work. You know, or waves on waves on waves. If you know what you're looking at, it's like a nine on a nine on a nine. It's it's a very powerful number, and it's sacred to the Draco. You know, they're called the Law of Nine. You know, you look at an eight point star. Yes, yeah, center. It's like the 12 apostles or the 12 tribes of Israel or the 12, uh, t you know, the, the, the 12 numbers on the clock, you have the center, and that dictates the connection, as it were. Yeah. How's that? Does that sound okay, fellas? Just making sure. Yeah, it's amazing. Sometimes, sometimes you might get to it. It's on your face here, it's uh, scratching there. Oh, sorry, mate. I'm really, really doing my best here. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know a trick. I might do this. That might be better. How's that? I've only got I've got it in mono. <laughs> Go on. That's good. Yeah, I'm in stereo. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, it's a real honor to be here. Now, do you want to keep going with this or do you want to move yeah, on yeah. to symbology um, and symbols? Can we backtrack and um, um, the little key that you held up? Oh yeah, yeah. This is um this is the elements one. Uh, so is that to yeah. go in a computer? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That one there. It's got my logo on it. Everyone right. see that? Okay. That. Yeah, it's a USB. Right. And it's got all the meditations for the elements that we've worked on as well. And it has information, you know, plus all the, the notes and all the credits and things like that. And it has the, the books that I wrote. Yeah, that's my my logo. It's a very interesting logo that because it's actually my name and alchemy put together and creates an X. It's really cool. X Men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're real. They have, they're, they're, there's people on this planet that have got advanced abilities and they need to learn to wake them up. So, yeah, the Michael. So it's seven letters in Michael and seven letters in alchemy. Alchemy is almost like a reverse. It, it, it's like it's. Yeah, it's, if you look at the, where the lines go, I won't go into that. It's a lot to explain, but um, yeah, another, it's my symbol. That's another show, is it? Yeah, that's another show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, it's 2035. Hey, Mike, how are you going? Hang on, my wheelchair is stuck in the door. I'll get there. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the next one we're putting together on the planet, the planet meditations. Uh, this is it, my, my friend Cam and um, Vesna. She's been helping me so much with a lot of this work as well. So can and, people buy, buy them off your Yeah, website? they can buy them online. Yeah. These are these were normally there were thirty hang on, where are we? Okay. I gotta go. I got, I got cameras and bloody things everywhere. I don't know which one's which. Oh, exactly. Yeah, he's a genius, not. No, I'm a mad scientist. It's great. Okay, there. That one there. Okay, it's a lot of a lot of info on there. 
that'll help you. But it's only the meditations. Once you start to get it, understand how to build the substances of the, the universal forces in your body, you get access to so much. And this isn't the only way to do it. You, you might have your way of doing it, but this is, you know, it's a USB key. Okay. Just go straight in your, your USB slot, you know, universal serial bus. Wow. I mean, I mean, look at the, the numbers and the names they use on all these the computers. They're hiding it in front of your face. It's gorgeous. I'll answer the questions as soon as I can. Uh, here's another one. I might do private uh, Q&A for some people because some of the stuff is so sensitive at the moment. And I'm trying to stay positive with everything here. <laughs> this is the new one we're doing with the planets. As I say, we've got the planetary meditations, how to meditate on the planets. I mean, this is a lot of the, the Franz Baden work that we learned in the Kabbalah as well as many of the other teachers, right. you know, because when we're doing that. Well, the, the beauty with the Kabbalistic knowledge is you can – work with any culture you know you work with a lot of religions a lot of philosophies and it's kind of got it right back down to the you know really stripped down basics but the basics got so much power so much oomph as it were you can go out there with all the excessive knowledge that i talk about but once again you come back to basics and as you build on the basics you got a more solid foundation as it were yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah we're wired up we're wired up how, how cool is that we're actually running all these planetary energies through us. So yeah, this is one I recommend. This one here, it usually uh, we we was some thirty nine dollars, and we're doing them as a special now. They're um they're twenty five dollars on special. These ones here, and okay, um, you send me one. Yeah, I will. I shall indeed. Okay, and this is a new planetary one. We're just putting together. Really, really proud of this one as well. So yeah, that one's got all the, the meditations from the sun. Uh, to Pluto, we decided not to put the moon on there because we're doing another one on the moons, you know, not just um, our moon because there's a lot of power. I, I do do the meditations of the moons, but we've got Io and Ganymede and Callisto and you've got Titan and that. They've got a lot of energy as well. They're, they're, they're quite um, uh, present. Uh, so, yeah, meditating on on the planets. As you know, we have the Roman, yet there's, there's Luna, you know. The mm. Greek name is Artemis, you know, Luna. You know, and that's where lunacy comes from on full moons where people freak out. They, they've got too much, um, you know, massive amount of liquid, you know, tidal energy going through them. Yeah, you understand. It's cool. So it's like advanced um, astrology, astronomy, numerology. Um, but it becomes like a cosmology. And it's really cool, you know, because I think it answers a lot, or connects a lot of things that you were learning, you know, over the years and you haven't sort of done much with it. And then it connects, it goes boom, 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 you know. So that's why I teach hermetics. The beauty about Hermetics is, you know, from obviously Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice born, whose name in um, uh, uh, Roman is Mercury, and obviously in Greek uh, Macedonian is uh, Hermes, the messenger of the gods. That's a very, very interesting planet to work with because it gives you access to a lot of areas. <laughs> it's really good. I mean, in astrology, well, depending on what astrology you use, and I don't know how many different systems of astrology there are now, um, and depends. I mean, obviously there's the there's um, tropical and sidereal and Vedic astrology, Mayan astrology, plus all the different types of those astrological charts is more classical. And I don't know, someone put in about a dozen asteroids in there now, you know. So, yeah, it's all well, it's all going to be coming together on this new this new this new key. So, uh, I, I really love it. Um, we're going to have that uh, available soon. We're still doing a lot of the touch-up work in the sounds. Mm -hmm. And make sure the sound's right, which is good. I'm like my scratching microphone tonight. <laughs> Sorry about I won't do that call back again. Gosh. Oh. It's a um, learning curve. Oh yes, phenomenal. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right language. Um yeah, okay, let's, so, go, um, let's go to Greg, um Greg George's question, which was um back to um mm -hmm. What was he just trying for? to see it. It came up on my screen. Give me a second. I'll just the, um, obviously the KGB, which is in Russia. They had a book yeah, yeah, racist book. Yeah, about the um, the craft they found. No, no, alien races book. It's, I'll, I'll put it up. There, the question. Oh, the alien race book. Oh, yes, yeah. Actually, I spoke with George, uh, Greg George. I uh, was about a few years ago. He gave me that that book. I actually, had another one that that complemented that too. There was about. 57 races the KGB knew about, you know, when they were coming out to, you know, as I say, obviously with any of the um, the secret services in any of the countries, because every country's got them, um, you know, for their own 
military, whether they're controlled or um, I'll just center myself there again. Okay. Um, yes, there. Are, that that book is <laughs> that book is um, a, a very very uh, important handbook if uh, you uh, want to understand a lot of the different species. But as I said, 57 is probably too many to talk about tonight, but it's, it's very good. And I, I thank him for sending me that too. Uh, I have other ones as well. Now, 57 different types of ET races alone. And that book is quite old, you know. Um, just to get into that is, once again, I don't know if we've got the time and scope to get into it, but I, I do thank uh, Greg for that book. Um, it's not something you're going to – get off Amazon, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> and there are, there are a lot of those handbooks. Actually, when Dr. Stephen Greer came out, it um, uh, was 2000, 2013, actually, I opened that show at the Bond University. That was really good. Thanks very much to um, Kama Collect for that. That was really good. Um, yeah, I got to meet him. Uh, but he did a, a forum back in around the turn of the – millennia about 2000 2001 and he had ex personnel came up you know there was dr uh a senior sergeant clifford stone and he was dropped what they call driving the dragon wagon it's this massive low load and they pick up the craft they take them back to obviously area 51 or any of the other places i don't know which are andrews air force whatever those those and then they take him and they put him into the obviously the facilities and they're reverse engineering a lot of that sort of stuff with the craft, you know, they reverse engineered it. So obviously they had to bring the game up. And there's always the rumours that you might know about a lot of the stuff that, that was found at um, Roswell. Mm. I mean, they, they, they reckon things like Velcro, oh, it was invented by this person, you know, that that's the mainstream saying that. But a lot of the fibre optic cables, that sort of stuff was, you know, given to us. It finally came out, you know, obviously to the civilian stuff for the last, you know, 30, 40 years or whatever. But it, it trickles down. I mean, the tech that that's available uh, to us is absolutely phenomenal, but it, it just doesn't usually reach, you know, civilian street, as it were. So, yeah. Thanks. That book is quite good. I, I should actually release it. Um, it's um, it's quite a quite an interesting uh, read, that's for sure. Plus, it's got uh, pictures too of different types of beings too. So there's there's a lot of um, uh, different. Uh, as I said, like if you can imagine all the different breeds of cats or the different breeds of fish or, or whatever, that that's that's what you're sort of um, looking at as well, and some. Some species, they're, they're just going on a journey through space looking at things. But uh, once again, I, I don't know, there's um, there's like a grid locking down around the planet at the moment with um, a lot of the satellite stuff too. So very, very hard to, you know, discern all that information. You, you've got to try and prove it. You've got to try and triangulate your information and, and get as much uh, high quality intel as you can. And um, that that's why, you, you know, you always trust your gut feelings on things. Thank you so much. Uh, symbology. Yep, yep, I'm here. I'm going to shape shift so, uh, again. <laughs> Polymorphing, that spell is called. If you're going past the average um, Wiccan and moving into that sort of work, yeah, polymorph. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about star seeds, and then. Um, yeah. Obviously, most people relate to constellations and galaxies based on their star signs. Yes. So, are we referring to the fact that? I'm just throwing up Aquarius here, but I mean, we can go to the. Yeah, next Aquarius one. is. Yeah, Aquarius. there's a couple of big powerful stars in Aquarius. Um, yeah, those names. A lot of the, the star names were around around the 10th century. They, they said a lot of the uh, Arabian names, Phoenician names. Some of them go right back, as well as you've got all the, the Greek and Norse, you know, mysteries sort of thrown in there as well. Um, yeah, if we looked at the zodiac, uh, each of the stars. So, if we looked at say certain constellations, there's, there's a mass. There's usually a massive star or a combination of stars that, that give it its energy. So, if you looked at um, say Scorpio, you have Antares. That's the main star uh, in in the system. It's like the heart of the Scorpion. When I pointed it out at one of the lectures, so you have Antarian beings, and they're they're an advanced race too, but for me to go down the whole scope of, oh my God, their the history, their heritage is phenomenal. Plus, they learn a lot through their battles. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You brought it right up there on the screen. Yeah, Antares is just right there, just towards the claws. 
you know, that's that's it. It's a red giant sun, about 500 times the size of our sun. So it creates a lot of a lot of energy. Um, once again, if if I if I went through most of the the constellations, it's it's the big stars that give it the energy. Um, Sagittarius, the Kraus, Australis, um, uh, sort of Hummel, and Aries, Taurus. You've got some powerful stars as well. Star systems and star star seed beings. Obviously, the Palladians are there in Taurus. Um, Older Baron. There's the Crab Nebula and the Horns. Um, the Hyads. The Hyads is another combination. They're supposed to be the sister star race of the Palladians. Hyads. H Y A. I D E S in our English language, angle language, language of angels, language of the angels, language of the angels, language of the angles. Um, yeah, so as you go through it, and that's just in our 12. So, you know, that's kind of like an elliptic that our solar system's growing through, or our sun, our solar sun is growing through those stars. It's like she's on a learning journey and her planets, they're all growing through time and space on these massive uh, fields, these massive wheels. Are all the suns connected to each other? Um, yes, in many different ways. It's, that's a really big question. Greg George has asked that question. It's a very good question. But many, like, it's like a tribe or, or, or a culture, and it has a bigger influence. But when you're under the influence of this particular sun or this constellation, which is a 30 degree segment of the sky or 30 degrees. And then you can divide each one of those degrees in, you know, you get another uh, partition again, you know, what we call this 10 degrees is a deacon. Okay. And if you get all 30 degrees and every one of these days on the wheel, different influences take place. So you might see angels as ETs, but you might see them in the classic form because that's how your, soul astral mind communicates to you it's like how you communicate with symbols and you know in your dreams you you're given symbolic or, or, or signs and it's up to you to read that you know if you're connected to it um once again all the stars i, I digress I, I will say everything is connected to everything else but it's on such a high dimension you know I'm, um, you know, we're all at one, but, you know, we're not at one with the wars that are happening. We're not at one with the, you know, the terrible things, crimes that are being committed by people in power. We're not at one with that. But apparently that's all part of the bigger learning curve. Well, you know, that that's a lesson I don't really want to learn. I don't need to learn that lesson. I'm, I'm over that. So once again, we're dreaming the new dream. And there's a lot of power in a sun. So if you meditate on suns, they, they, they communicate. You realise it's not... An inanimate object it creates life because that's what the universe does that's what galaxies do that's what suns do they just create life and it is said in many of the cultures once again that a sun is a combination of all these consciousness coming together which is like an ascension process on a planet and these cultures come together and they, they fuse as one they keep their own individual identity but it's not like some big, big burning ball of hydrogen gas that is just happens to be there by random chance. It doesn't work that way. It's conscious. It, it, it's living. So, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said about the suns and the stars as we go into the star law deeper and deeper. That question there is, can you speak about the beehive slash cancer? But um, I think the beehive's more associated with play, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's it's not so much a, an area I have um, that much of a connection to it. Um, in cancer, as I said, I, we're because of the, the the name cancer, what it means. We we found the Sanskrit word part of that constellation is, is called um, Tisha. I like the name Tisha rather than cancer, if you know what I mean, because. That's a big problem with our English language. A lot of the words are backwards. And that's what creates confusion and a babble. Um, uh, the beehive um, that cluster, that system, I could talk on it in the next show if you want. I'll get a download more on that at the moment. I don't know enough about that. I'm sorry. That's as far as my knowledge is concerned um, because there's so much energy 
either side of cancer in Leo. That's another one. You got Regulus and Dernabola as well. I haven't done that much work with um, that particular um, uh, constellation. It's it's to me. I, I think they're like gateways. You know how like in Hawaii, Hawaii is another massive portal, particularly um, uh, Kauai. Kauai there, there's that gateway of the souls um, on that island, the sacred island, not the big island, but the small one. Kauai. There. So once again, there's where energy or, or intelligence comes in and out of this this plane, this planet, as it were. So it's just like simply. If you did a psychic reading for someone and you were doing a distant reading, you, you know, you basically project your consciousness there and you read, read the energy signature, as it were, and then you can read that energy. All I know that about the, gate, the, the beehive, I've heard of it before, but it's more of just a gateway. Um, once again, like, like Beetlejuice is more of a gateway star system. You know, you know. I hope that answered your question. That's Sagittarius, eh? Center of the galaxy. Yeah, just in front of Sagittarius or between Sagittarius and Scorpio. Actually, if you actually looked at the ancient maps where that the arrow of the centaur points is to the center of the galaxy. So the centaur shows you the center of the galaxy, the centaur. More about hybrid species on this planet too because that's some of the things that went in, you know, the different – uh, humanoid um, things that went on. There was a lot of that. They were splicing a lot of DNA. Um, that's where the Enlil and Enki thing. Enki was a master genetic scientist. So there was a few um, beings that, uh, you know, minotaurs, centaurs, satires, you know, the half goat people, those sort of They exist in other realms and dimensions. You see them on the astral plane quite, quite often, you know, or not quite often, but depends if you're looking for them. Um, yeah, there was a lot of them. I experienced them. That energy around Venice, powerful. Oh my gosh, they were really. They were blown out that I could see them. I was blown out that they could see me. Well, that they connected to the conscious because you, if you go to a certain area and you see and you emit a particular light or a particular energy. But anyway, that was my personal experience. So, um, anyway, I know I do digress. So there, there are more systems. I, I've done a lot of research. But there's a lot of stars up there. So. <laughs> I can recall. I just see um, certain ones. I just say it's like a gateway. We did that presentation at uh, Cam and Liza's. was fantastic at the uh, the property that night. Remember, we saw the seven, five, six, seven, eight of those um, dots. We thought they were like they were gonna be satellites, and they just stopped at Beetlejuice, and then they disappeared. That was pretty cool. Uh, didn't I didn't prepare that for the night? That's for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You were there. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. That was, yeah. Once again, I was actually getting to that particular – I'd already put some energy out for it, and then it like, wow, put on a show. Um, yeah, so once again, the star law, you are star law. You are star seeds, and that's that's one of the big secrets that um, wants to be taken away, hidden or away, you know, the, the, the powers that be want to try and keep people dumbed down, obviously, through, you know, certain substances like fluoride and blah, blah, blah. But we want to be awake. We want to dream the dream. And um, there's a really powerful combination of letters, too, that's still present in a lot of words, and that's the combination of E and A. When you get that together, E-A, in Sumerian, I think it's the ancient Gaelic, Celtic, or many of the ancient... Uh, languages, I think in yeah, in many of the Americas, they call it Aya, E A, which is another name for Enki. Okay, the genetic scientist. But once again, people can have their own opinions about that. But um, yeah, he was here, and then uh, his big brother came over and took over. And that was um, Jehovah, God of the Word. Yeah, that was um, Enlil. Yeah. So anyway, that that story and it permeates through Mesopotamia and the Middle East, and also they had a sister Ninkashag. When they had the big, um, the big nuclear battle um, way back when, um, yeah, Nikashag moved to Asia, uh, that area then, and set up a lot of the serpent temples. You know that yeah, kind of culture. A, there. She was a genetic scientist as well. She did a lot of. Yeah, stuff. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly. she seeded the yeah. Adam Cadmon, the uh, Homo sapiens sapien, that that that, that our, our current strain. But yeah, where we going now? Homo superior, one of those, I don't know, acronyms that they use. 
yeah, that that's that's where our, our DNA is going. Because what in Lil did, he wanted to try and stop what Enki was doing. Because Enki genetically mixed his own DNA in the blood pool. So you've got that happening. And those people that wake up have got that. And you don't have to go back for you know, you've got to go back about a thousand years. You'll be related to stacks of royal beings, you know, all over the planet, you know, go back even 2,000 years, you know, you'll probably have that connection and it, somewhere. And Nico, mm -hmm. she, she did the, um, the falcon breed, you know, as well as the, um, uh, the lion breed, you know, humans with, with the lion um, features. Oh, the lionoids, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the cat people. Um, yeah, it's very, very strong. In the race, it's like um, uh, the Leonor, the Leonids. I think it was the yeah, Leonids. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cat people. Yeah, where well, you see like you like the cheetah head or yeah, the, the lion beings and also the panther, all those sort of cat people. Yeah, very, very intelligent. That's why cats were like domesticated out of out of Egypt. I'm using Egypt as sort of that whole area of Mesopotamia. It's, it's just a source. There's no. Um, it's just that I, I, I could just sort of map it from that area much, much easier and the spread of the different um, tribes and races out of there as well. So, yeah. Well, Jeff, and, if you're immortal and you've been living for a couple of million years, I mean... Yeah, you, well, as I you said, you can only more, access so much, yeah, at a time, as I said. To say it, as I said, it was funny when I first started working this work. I was so excited to learn it and I wanted to talk to people and they just looked at you like an absolute, you know, what size straitjacket would you like, you know, that kind of thing. And... <laughs> extra large please exactly do you have an orange yes and you have to have that sort of thing and then in the end it's like oh there's a lot of i can't talk this even even people that are progressing you can only say so much at a certain time but you know you gave me this really good opportunity to talk about the star law and the star seeds it's such a massive area what is the power or origin meaning of the word earth you mentioned EA. As, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the EA. Yeah, exactly. Earth, Earth, you Earth something. <laughs> Once again, I believe most of the words in it, those powerful words have several hundred meanings. Um, the origin of Earth, well, originally, I, I believe that's its name. But once again, we look at it as Gaia. Once again, when you see these combinations of vowels and consonants together, it gives it a lot more energy. As well, that's why you have silent G's or silent N's on, on certain words because there's a, there's a hidden meaning. So, yeah. But anyway, getting back to Earth, there's other names for it. Terra firma, Terra, T-E-R-R-A. That's like when George Bush said, we're going to we're gonna have a war on Terra. Yeah, we're gonna, they're just telling you straight up what they're going to do, you know, that line, straight up what they're going to do. You know, they're going to create a war on Earth. You know? So Earth is powerful. So it's she's our teacher. You know, like if you looked at that combination cabalistically, E is fifth element, okay, A first, uh, so that's um, etheric, air, R is Ra, gold, earth, then T, T earth things out, T is your earth, and then H, highest feminine concept, highest feminine common, uh, principle letter, the H. Yeah, that's why when you have um, PH together, you've got masculine and feminine, balances things, rather than just the F. F works under law, that's why, you know, it's... Um, You've got to be um, understanding. Yeah, words create worlds. You know, in the so beginning with language. the word. Yeah, you got to understand the language. There are other languages to it, but it, it, you can't use that in a common sense or a common text. The it, it just when you know it, that's why many cultures chant. They chant. And they chant and they wail. That's why you know Gregorian chanting, or they wail at the wall, or they they do this, that 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 power and that sound, you know, oh really? I mean, the Tibetans. I don't need to explain that anymore. That's another lecture, you know, on on color of sound and number vibration. What's semantics? You know, you hit the number, the frequency, and the stones. You know, they levitate. Anyway, I've got books on that if you want to do it. it still goes on today, particularly in Tibet when they're building things up on mountains. It is communicate to the stone and they know the frequency and boom, boom, boom. You think these people, <laughs> they're very switched on, but they don't give it to the West, you know. Well, well you'd, you'd have to be very close to them. There's there's more on that later. I'd like to talk more yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, I'm sure living Otis stones. elevators are not interested in knowing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks very much for your questions too. I know sometimes a little bit diversion in, in, or, or a bit, skeptical in answering them but not for the wrong reasons it's just sometimes it's beyond the scope i, I just move so much um 
you know, you've got to be careful because you're just going to go straight down to so many tangents. So basically what I'm saying is the stars are suns and we are sun seeds. We are star seeds. That's why like Hollywood uses, you know, you know, galaxy of stars or they're a star or um, Australia, they have the logies. A logies is a god, L-O-G-O, logos, a logos. You have a logo as your label. You have a sign. You sign your name. It's an autograph. You sign your signature. Because even if you sign your name, you take that with you into the astral plane as well. It, it works as above, so below, as within, so without. Because that's that becomes your symbol, you know, or not so much your symbol. I was going to get into that. I'm really glad I'm not getting into too much on the signs and symbols. It was a huge area. So basically, that's what I was that's saying about each of yeah, well, each of the each of the zodiac signs have their sign, and the difference between a sign, a symbol, and a sigil, you know, or a glyph, is understanding what it means. So, glyphs are more to architecture and structure, but you could still say a glyph is like you know, like the the symbol uh, for Aries or, or for Leo or for Sagittarius or for you know Virgo or whatever. So th that that's a sign. It's kind of like an icon on your um, desktop or on your home computer, or um, you know, or it's like an app on your on your your phone or your tablet. It's an app. You just tap it because you've already encoded the energy into it. If you've meditated on these constellations of these 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 planets, that symbol it's it's just shortcut. It just shortcuts all the. The complications of going through all those processes again like you've you've nailed that you, you've got that so once you see that symbol you can access the the encryption as it were you know it takes you through to that place yeah. or takes you through that knowledge as it were how cool is that yeah. <laughs> amazing <laughs> it's, a, it's a universe and a universe and a universe isn't it just yeah just yeah this is universe. this is yeah the mystery school it's virtually a mystery mm -hmm. school online as i yeah, said yeah. and if you want to study with me um i'll put up i'm just i'm working actually i've got my my website open at the moment i'm just about to sort of just mod out a lot of the courses and there's going to be a lot more online courses where people can learn from me obviously i'll have a better mic set up and <laughs> camera sorry just I've got to keep doing that callback. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, what time are we wrapping this up too? Because I'm running low on battery yeah. and I can't charge. So yeah, I, it's been an no, absolute pleasure, perfect. Jeffrey, Andrew. I, I love you guys. Thanks so much for having me back again. So we'll be doing another course. We've got one coming up at um, the Salisbury uh, Centre as well. So if you want to put that up on the site. Um, as well as I've been doing the Sea Soccer Society in Brisbane, I've got four. I'm doing the basics there. They want me to come right from ground one, square one, and then you, you learn through the lessons and, you know, sky's the limit. <laughs> Pardon the pun, shock and pun. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you will learn. And, uh, yeah, you won't go just in four directions. You'll understand the seven directions. So, yeah, north, south, east, west, centre, up and down. Cool. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much knowledge and wisdom. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I'm just happy to sit and listen and just look at the pictures because, you know, like you're talking, like I said, you're talking way outside of my comfort zone, if you like, on all of these areas. But, um, you know, I think it'd be good thank to you. have you back maybe on numbers and colours. And, and Thank you. Well, it could be sound. It could be all sorts of things. So, if you're up for it, we'll um, we'll book you in for another slot later on. Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you, thank you so much, Andrina. Uh, um, it, it's gorgeous. So, everyone, big hello out to everyone in the UK. Sorry, don't. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, if people want to know uh, to do your courses or anything, then just to go on oh, your website. My website, yeah, michaelsalchemy um dot com. Mm, yeah, michaelsalchemy dot com. As I say, it's probably open and being edited at the moment. I've probably put up about too many. Uh, anyway, it's good. The basic courses and the new ones are coming up as well. So that's my next um, part of my next adventure. Exactly. And if you know a really good PA, let me know. I, I, I need a hand to do this stuff because editing put fries my head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting it out there to the universe. I've got yeah. really, really awesome friends and family. I'm very, I'm very lucky. Oh, I'm very blessed. I, I, love, yeah. I love my life. And that's what you wish to do. Love your life. So thank you very much for um, adding to Dreaming the Dream. It's been wonderful. Thank you so right. much. Well, thank you, Michael. And we'll, we'll have you on another time and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. That's our man. Very good. Thank you.
Hang on a sec. There you go. And Thank I'll just you. put your hang on a sec. We've got questions coming up. Hang on. Uh, oh, God. Q and A. Yeah, just whatever works for you. Um, they're all thank you. Okay. There well, you thanks so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thanks, Greg and Yvonne and uh, Andrew and Yvonne. Thank you, Yvonne, well, for tuning you. in from Adelaide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Greg Some on the Gold Coast. Yeah, um, everyone on the Gold, all around Australia, all over in the yeah, UK, yeah. all around the world, for that yeah. matter. So, thank you so much. Um, much more to happen, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll get a lot more of the people connected to it. So it's, it's wonderful. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of this work, and I'm going to get very, very busy this year. I'm sure. So, already am now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and we got. Thank you. Rumble there, some through. Or oh, two. Jeez, they're in there. They have the flicking them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being part of my audience. It's, it's wonderful. Wow. Wow. The reason I've taken time to put those up is purely because we go to eight different broadcasting sites. And so when they put their post up, it's only on their post, but um, what I'm trying to yes. do here is share it on all the other eight um, sites and platforms. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's so that's good. why we're doing that. Michael, there you go. Oh, thanks for the patience. It was like, I said, I couldn't believe with the sound and the one thing went after another. I was like, this, uh, I, was like I just, I went, chill. We're going to get this game on. We're going to make this. I know I made you dizzy, but it's all right. We got there. Thank you for your cosmic patience, <laughs> Jeff. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Okay, thank so you. Uh, Friday night um, in Brisbane, Friday night, 29th of April, 7.30 at the Salisbury Centre, 183 yes. Lillian Avenue, Salisbury. Yeah. Yes. That's the 29th, isn't it? Yeah, 29th of April. That's right. Yeah. Kick it off. What time you want to kick it off? About 7? 7? No, 7.30. Yeah. 7.30 is better. That's good. It gets everyone to get a chance to get home and get cleaned up and after work or, you know, studies or whatever. So, yeah, it's cool. Maybe. I'm just going to type that up and just put it up there before we jump out so that people will see it later on. Uh, you guys carry on talking there. Just as a Salisbury and Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone in the audience, please. Thanks, man. It's been wonderful. There's so many questions. And sometimes when you get asked a question, it's just like you get to slide through you, your consciousness to sort of access it and you just got to do the best you can with what you've got and what you're going to be given as well. It's kind of like you're doing a reading. So, yeah. Symbols. We'll do more on symbols and yeah, symbology definitely. as well. Mm. well. Okay. So they want you back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, yeah, exactly. I'll have a better, better setup. Okay, I've got the mic magician. I couldn't, I couldn't do the proper one in the time that I had. So I thought, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we made here. the man is pure gold. So we'd like to know how you do your, um, alchemy, make to transmute metals into gold. <laughs> oh yeah, well, literally, it's, it's it's got about seven metaphors to that as well. There's quite a few metaphors with it, but um, then the, the actual transmute. <laughs> That can be done, but you've got to wait for the right alignments. And I'm talking planetary alignments. And that's why certain beings come here at certain times, even with ground penetrating radar. That's why uh, anyway, it, that's a complex yeah. thing that goes into the star law too. So yeah, where you find the gold, you find the gods. Where you find the gods, you find the gold. Yeah. And that's what it was all about, the gold mining. Okay. Thanks so much for having us yeah, once again, folks. <laughs> okay. I won't even touch the <laughs> 